Hey, this is Pastor Rick. I'm in my red jacket today. I'm feeling good, people. That's what that means, right? <laughs> I have these colors I like, you know, red. And then Anyway, who cares? It's good stuff. I want to talk to you today about something that you face. It's called disappointment in my five-minute devotional. Five minutes with you in the Bible is going to be amazing. I want to show you how to manage disappointment because Abraham, our study today, is a guy in chapter 16 who struggles with that. I mean, he is a guy who just, I mean, he's tried, he's prayed, and he's 85 years old. Wow. He got to the promised land at 75, right? He's been in the promised land for 10 years, and he's struggling 10 years into the job. Now, waiting on the promise of God for a child, and nothing's happening. So let me show you what happens in this conversation. His wife comes up with this alternate plan. And oftentimes when we're disappointed, we do that. We try to help God out. So look at chapter 16 of Genesis, verse 1. It says, now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, see now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go, please, please go in and to my maid. Uh, just go sleep with her. Please just stop chasing me around. Please, perhaps I shall obtain children by her. I'll just claim her child as my own. And Abram heeded, didn't argue, didn't debate the voice of his wife, Sarah. Then Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan. 10 years was long enough. They were tired of waiting. She was tired of checking every 30 days to see if she was pregnant. She was tired of this. Look, look Abram, we're not doing this again, okay? I'm too old, and you're not. we're not having any children. It's not working out. I mean, this is a bad moment. So he goes along. You know, he doesn't take leadership. Interesting. He goes along with this plan, sometimes you abdicate leadership and you should stand up and say, no, I'm not doing that because that's not good. And so what happens is she, watch this now, allows this to happen. If you read the rest of the chapter, it's a disaster. It falls apart. She and Hagar get into it. Hagar starts looking down on her and uh -huh, you couldn't have any children, but now nah, I got a baby and you want to claim my baby. <laughs> it gets awful. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Well, anyway, by the way, they fight for generations after this, her descendants and, and Abram's descendants. When Abraham finally does have a child 25 years later, I'm sorry, not quite 25 years later, uh, about 15 years later. And so there's this challenge now that's going on, this really hard, and it's all because of a disappointment. There's a big word. Think about that word, disappointment. That's the word. I want you to think about that word. Because sometimes when you're disappointed, right, you do crazy things. You make bad decisions. You marry people you shouldn't marry. I'm just going to marry him because I, I need a man. I'm trying to raise this, these children. I need a man. So I'll get, I'll get Billy Bob. Billy Bob, come marry me because I need a man. I need a woman. I just need somebody to sleep with, be with, hold, and kiss. That's it. I don't care. You're a mean wo woman. That's right. You're wicked, but that's okay. I need <laughs> just so you're making these decisions. Based on disappointment, there's that big word again, right? Disappointment. Stop it. Disappointment may be God's delay to give you a better blessing. It's not always the bad thing. God says, you need some time to work this out. I need you, Abraham and Sarah, to settle in. I need you to get in the promised land for a while. I don't want you. To, it's not time yet. You know, that's what I think we need to learn. Sometimes it's not God's will for you to pastor now. It's not time for God, God's will for you to finish now. Take a deep breath. Learn to manage your disappointment. Because if you're going to get to God's best, you have to learn how to wait. And so let me pray for you. Father, I pray for those who are disappointed and about to make a bad decision. Disappointed, so disappointed, they're going to marry just anybody who's in, in, in line. I pray that you stop them today. Let this be a moment of pause. There's somebody that's about to take a job that's the wrong job. You hate it. You know you hate that job. Don't take it. Wait, wait where you are. Give God a chance to bless and guide you. Don't build the building yet, guy. Don't, 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 don't go. Lord, help them to be patient. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Bible says, so rise up and wait. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, my name is Pastor Ricky Temple. I pastor Overcoming by Faith in Savannah, Georgia. And I want you to feel free to connect with us. We'd love to get to know you. You can feel free to email me directly if you'd like. That's pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. And I do respond. I might scare you. Pastor at overcomingbyfaith.org. Also, I'd like to encourage you to get our app. Oh, boy, the app is amazing. Let me tell you what. The app has all kinds of stuff on it. Free sermons, free, free sermon notes. It's just cool. Get it. Download it into your phone and your device and use it all the time. And thank you for all of your support. A lot of people do that on the app. So thank you for those who do that. But finally, I want you to go today and be blessed. I have been happy to be with you today. I hope it sharpened your life and made you better. Go and be happy. I'll see you next time. My name is Pastor Ricky Temple.